Welcome everyone, today I'm going to be creating an illustration inspired by the movie My Neighbor Totoro from Studio Ghibli. So to start off, what I'm going to be doing is taping my paper to a piece of masonite, which I use as a drawing board. So a tip I like to use is to weaken the adhesive with a piece of cloth. So I'm using this little washcloth as an example. So all you do is just take the tape and stick it to a piece of fabric, any fabric, even fabric that you're wearing. Do that repeatedly, just stick it on, take it off, and it'll weaken the adhesive. That way, when you take, it, take off your tape at the end of your illustration, it won't damage the paper. And now we're ready to begin. Let's get started. So I'm going to be using this masking fluid first to mask up all the areas that I don't want to get paint. This type of masking fluid has a really fine tip, which is great for precision. And the cap has a little needle that helps it keep it from getting, you know, clogged or damaged. So I'm going to go start, I'm going to start by making some stars, which is just some drops of the masking fluid, if you can see what's going on. And I think I can go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. So I want to make a moon up here, so I'm going to be using the masking tape as like a stencil just to create a circular shape for the moon. So now I'm just finishing off the moon and adding another planet and some more stars because you can't have enough stars, right? So now I'm going to start working on the Totoro shapes. So I'm going to use this area over here on the bottom left and just start off with big Totoro, this bunny ears, and it, you know, his body's kind of like an egg shape and then he has like this little bubble of a tail on his back. So after using the masking fluid needle, I'm just going to go over with a brush later to fill in the rest of Totoro. And I'm also working on his little friends, his family, I guess. And they're pretty much just smaller versions of him. Alright, so our masking fluid is completely dry and we are ready to start painting. So it's important to make sure this dries completely or else if you start painting it'll just create a mess everywhere and we do not want that. So since I'm using watercolors, I'm going to start off with just adding some water to the paper. So when I first started getting ready, I realized some of my watercolor paint tubes were kind of stuck. So a tip to get them, you know, unstuck is just to use a pair of pliers and get a good grip of the cap and just gently wiggle it back and forth and to loosen it and your paint tube is open and ready to use. So I'm going to be using mostly blues, some magenta colors, and purple, just in all the colors in that spectrum to create this galaxy-like background. Another important thing with this is to add a lot of black because space is dark. So I'm using just normal Indian ink just to add some black to my illustration to make it darker in the background. So the key to making a galaxy-like image or illustration using watercolors is to keep on blending all of your colors, your blacks, magentas, blues, all of them and give them their own space and also to work on different areas of the paper at a time so that you can blend them all together in the end. So you'll see later on I'm going to be using salt as well, which is another watercolor technique. When you put salt on the paper with water, some like slightly wet watercolor, it how it has like this reaction where the water, the salt will cause the watercolors to spread out and create like this star looking effect. So as you can see, I am working on different areas of the paper at a time and just expanding out as much as I can. And also in between some of the areas that I'm working in, leaving some white spaces. That where that's where I can do some cover color overlapping and create some interesting effects later. So as you can see, our galaxy is starting to take some form. 
our night sky is starting to take some form and we just I'm just gonna keep on blending adding more black ink to blend all of these colors together just to make them more uniform So now I'm going to be using this ink to create some stars. This is just normal highlighting and correction ink, which will help me put more stars in the galaxy. So I'm just using a splatter paint method to splatter white stars all over the page. I'm also adding some iridescent silver into the mix just to create another dimension to the actual illustration. So I'm going to be working on Totoro's little tree branch that they're all sitting on. I'm going to do pretty much all of the foreground in black ink just to have it stand out a little bit from the colorful background that we have going on. So for the forest, I'm going to be using black ink like the other tree, and I'm just going to be using these really, really loose brush strokes. I love using loose brush strokes because it adds a more artsy element to an illustration and makes it look a little less, you know, a little less refor refined, I should say. So now I've taken off the masking fluid on the three Totoros and I'm drawing a ink outline for them just to give them some more definition on their ears and body and also their tails as well. And while these Totoros are drying, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the moon. So for the moon, I'm using a really, really pale yellow to start off with, and I'm going to be using my washcloth just to blot it out so it's not too dark. And I also wanted to create a bunny shape in the moon, kind of. Kind of like the legend that there's a bunny in the moon that's making rice bowls. So I'm just going to be using like this really dark color to create kind of like a bunny shadow almost. So I really didn't know what to do with this little planet because in reality there's not a planet near the moon other than Earth. So I'm kind of like going back and, back and forth whether or not I want to just get rid of this planet altogether. So now that our Totoros are dry, I'm going to go ahead and start coloring them in with just, you know, watercolor. So Big Totoro is a grayish color, the middle Totoro is blue, and the last Totoro is white. So I'm starting off with just like a standard little base coat and then adding shadow, sort of building up the shadow as I go along. I also wanted to try and define the cast shadows from their tails, their ears, and also try to show that they're being illuminated by the moon itself so that just kind of working on my direct light direction here. So I really, really love the little Totoro. She, he or she is just so adorable. So since she's, he or she is white, I decided just to use a gray for a shadow, but she kind of looks a little bit darker than the gray Totoro, but it's okay. So now that my Totoros are done drying, I'm going to be using the same ink that I used to create the stars and add some highlights around the illustration on the trees, on Totoros. And for the bottom trees, I'm using the same loose brush strokes as I, when I started with them, just to, you know, stick with the same looseness. I kind of like that it looks like they're, they kind of have snow on them, but that's just me. So I'm going to be using a technique, if you've heard of the painting technique of Grisaille, where you paint a black and white background and you go over it with glazes. I'm going to be using the same technique with the trees at the bottom. So right now they're just black and white, but I'm going to be going over them with green and some gray as well. Just so now I'm going over some of the trees with the green, just so they have like just a little bit of color in them, not too much that they distract from the rest of the illustration, but just enough so you get the idea like, oh, those are trees. So now we're almost done with this illustration. All that's left to do is to clean up everything, take off all this masking fluid and any leftover salt, and this illustration is complete. 
Now you can see the stars. Yay! Now I'm just, you know, going around getting rid of some of this masking fluid. So revealing some of the stars. See, they look really great against the galaxy-like background, which I love. And just kind of wiping off some of the salt as well and using my finger just to feel around for any thing that I've missed. I'm also using this little brush to help clean up the illustration. <laughs> so we are almost done, people. So my illustration is done. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share this with all of your friends. You can also follow me on all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can also find me on Snapchat and Periscope as well. Thank you everyone and don't forget to like and subscribe and share and have a great day.